Welcome back to my animal education series. Today I'm here with Brad and Dustin from Simply Spiders, and I actually met them at the St. Louis Show Me Snakes Reptile Expo. So it was super cool to meet you guys. Nice to meet you too. So, what is this business, Simply Spiders, that you guys started here? Uh, we uh, basically sell tarantulas, uh, babies, and adults. So, what's the whole process with breeding tarantulas? Uh, just depends, like, depending on the species, depending on, uh, like, whether they're terrestrial or arboreal. Uh, usually we end up taking a male, putting it into a cup, take, putting that cup into the female's enclosure, and then Hopefully the male starts being receptive and the female starts being receptive and then they, uh, the male walks underneath the female. So some of the enclosures out here behind me, like what are these for here? Okay, all these like little bitty tubs and everything have baby tarantulas in them. Uh, they're about anywhere from like a quarter or even an eighth of an inch all the way up to two inches in there. Yeah, I have one in there that's about two inches. And one else at the show, and then here, like, especially this one here, they are really elaborate and really decorated enclosures. Like, so why do you have that? Uh, I think it's important, like, especially since they're in such small uh, little areas, that we try to make their habitat as natural as possible. So one of the questions that people might be asking is, like, why did you guys choose to breed tarantulas of all animals to breed? Why did you breed, sir? Um, I did it mainly because I thought. You know, they're, they're not a common real, like, animal you see in the exotic pet trade generally. So, you know, you see a lot of your ball pythons, your red tail boas, um, you get sugar gliders, you get other kind of small mammals or unique mammals there, or other reptiles or amphibians. Tarantulas isn't one that's really out there a whole lot, and it's kind of something that's always kind of drawn my attention since I was a little younger. It's cool because, like, around the country, a lot of... A lot of communities don't have a large tarantula group, but uh, working here in St. Louis with people, we actually have like a really large number of people who absolutely love tarantulas. Uh, and you were saying that like, it's not too common that you have a tarantula breeder. That's what I knew that we had to jump on this opportunity because it's super interesting because I don't know a whole lot about tarantulas and let alone tarantula breeding. So I thought this would be a great, great group of business to interview. Yeah, it's a uh, pretty cool. We have an Armenia sack that's supposed to be our Armenia sack that's supposed to be coming up here pretty soon. We'll be pulling that October fifteenth. So we're crossing our fingers that everything goes uh, successfully with that one. So what are some of your favorite tarantula species that you have here? Okay, my favorite tarantula is this one right here. Uh, this is a Brazilian dwarf beauty. Uh, they usually get up to like three to four inches and uh, they're a bright blue, and they have a kind of like a hot pinkish uh, tint on its rear end, basically. Uh, that one's an, a female I had sex with by an entomologist at Kansas State University, and they're very hard to tell if they're male or female just because they're so so small. Right, but what's yours? Uh, for me, it would be the P. moranus or the orange baboon tarantula. Uh, unfortunately, you can't really see him, but he's kind of right down in there. Um, they're, I just, I like the color orange. They stand out a lot to me. Uh, they're real feisty sometimes, and it's just kind of interesting to watch them, the way they eat, the way they move more. They're a lot faster than a lot of than some of the other species you see, so it's something that really stood out to me and something that I, I fell in love with. And then you were telling me before the interview that they're kind of like, that orange. Yeah, uh, a lot. Some of them will get about this bright orange uh, when they're like right after they molt. They're going to be very bright and vibrant, and just like any of these tarantulas will be. Um, and then as they kind of get closer to molting again, they're going to kind of dull out to more like a dull orange. Um, I, I mean, I've seen some of some of the uh, OBTs as bright as pumpkins. Wow, that's so, really bright. And what are some of the other tarantulas that we have here? Okay, so I always jack up this scientific name, but I always, this is one of the tarantulas I really love. Uh, this is a Brachiopelma auratium, auratum, 
a Rotom, okay? Uh, it is absolutely one of my favorites. Uh, I don't really hold a whole lot of tarantulas, but when I got that tarantula, I did. Uh, I made a big deal out of it with all the people in St. Louis and the tarantula group that uh, I took pictures and stuff that I was holding it. So this is a mature female versicolor. She's uh, she's probably about six inches. Uh, not a lot of people around here have a mature female, and I'm kind of excited because we have a mature male over there, or almost mature male. We have one more molt until we mature, and we'll start breeding them. But uh, she's very pretty. She has purple legs, and she's purple and green, basically. But this is an arboreal species, and uh, she's in a very a nice tall enclosure with arboreal species. You want more height than uh, width, but terrestrial, like the bracky down here. Uh, you definitely want to have like a longer space for them to live in. So for people first getting into to, into tarantulas, uh, what would you recommend as like a beginner species? Um, I think, I mean, personally I would say a good beginner species would be more of like a, uh, a Chilean rose hair or any kind of, you know, like even uh, the BR rotoms, I think they're fairly good for starter tarantulas. Uh, I think the grandma soul pole cracks is like the it was my first tarantula so i'm kind of biased on it but it's in the grandma solo species they tend to be like super docile uh not all of them because some of those hairs i've seen super crazy but uh they they just tend to be uh less temperamental they don't really uh they're not very fast so but they're still beautiful and they have like bright bold yellows on a, a really dark tarantula so i think they're pretty cool to have for your first tarantula Again, I'm biased. I think we all are by our first pet. Yeah, you know. For me, I had Eastern Fox Turtles, so I, I love those to death. So, what has been one of your favorite things about riding with Simply Spiders? For me, honestly, it's getting, honestly, like getting to meet everyone, get to get out there, uh, kind of educate people and teach them, like, hey, like, tarantulas aren't this scary monster that, that TV and the media has made them out to be. They're actually really interesting to watch. They're a lot of fun to just kind of feed them, watch them grow, and just watch them interact with the way that they, the way that they hopefully would in, in the wild. So I find it a lot of fun just being able to do that. I, uh, I think it's really cool because uh, as a business, it's really neat to do with the tarantulas and whatnot. But what's even cooler is to have like the friends come over and like hang out and uh, just kind of have like a good time and really focus on something we all have a passion for. It's cool to see like somebody that, like Brad or uh, Steven, uh, like who didn't know a whole lot when they first started and like people come together as a group and like being a community and teaching everybody and like everybody getting to learn, like uh, Jess getting to rehouse it. They have a 10 year old kid who got to come over and rehouse his first fighter. It was really neat. So you know to see People growing as like keepers and breeders is probably like the coolest thing about running this business. And then maybe even like this where you get to educate all the people. Yeah, there. like this is our first time. Yeah. Like I'm super nervous because I'm on camera, but like, yeah, like it is super, it's really awesome to be able to meet you and your dad and like, yeah, it's like the big coolest part about running this business. You know, mm -hmm. that. And even educating people from across the world because my dad and I have noticed that we have a lot of Australian viewers. Hey, go Ooh. Australia! I will one day make it there. I will one day. So, are there any other spiders that you guys want to show off? Uh, yeah, we have an Armira. Alright, so what's really cool about the Armira is that they're the only, I would say, true trapdoor tarantula. Um, so basically what they'll do is they'll dig a nice big tunnel, like you kind of you see it here in this enclosure, how it digs down. And what they'll do is they'll take, they'll use their web and they'll pull little bits and pieces of everything above it, leaves, uh, small sticks, whatever they can get a hold of, kind of foliage, and they'll just kind of put it up on their web on the top. And then as soon as something steps on one of those those little webs on top of it, they come up, grab it, pull it down. Wow. So That's crazy. Right now he's really small, but and he'll probably need something that's going to be filled up to like probably about... Would you say like four or five inches of substrate? Oh yeah, easily. So they're they're really cool species. Um, they're an, uh, they're an old world species really. So they come from South Africa. They're really really cool though. And well, this one's in the middle. Uh, this is a Brazilian redhead. Um, 
This one's really cool because they're known for their digging. They make like this con like perfect constructive burrow and they will always have like an entrance and an exit hole. Uh, sometimes if you leave them in, they'll have like four or five different entrance and exit holes. Uh, mm -hmm. But this one's really notorious for digging and he can probably dig down if we let him a good 12 inches. So wow. For such a tiny spider, they can really dig. And then this is a, a, a piece of mozzie. It's really, really cool. It's a little sling that we have. This will end up turning out to be like a iridescent blue. Um, that's actually what it even name is. Its common name is the iridescent blue. So. And you just said a, a sling. You mentioned that a couple times. What exactly is a sling? Okay, a sling is a uh, spider wing. So like okay. a baby spider or tarantula. Um, it's just easier to say than like, oh, this baby spider. Uh, it's just a very common term used in the tarantula hobby for baby spider, basically. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for telling us about uh, Simply Spiders and all the work that you guys do here. Thanks for coming out. Appreciate yeah, it. I really appreciate it. it. Yeah. And as always, if you guys enjoyed this week's episode, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to my channel, and also check out my Instagram, at Culture. As always, I'll see you next week.